I'm here to talk to you about the project using medical illustrations to aid diagnosis of neglected tropical diseases. By profession, I'm a medical artist as well as a part-time PhD student at Surrey University researching and illustrating neglected tropical diseases. To start with, I'm illustrating Beruli ulcer, yours, and for comparison, <coughs> tropical ulcer. I have completed an initial set of Beruli ulcer illustrations and it is these I'm going to show you today. I believe that medical illustrations can aid diagnosis for NTDs and the research aims to establish evidence for this. I shall start with a quick overview of medical illustrations with two examples. Next, I shall explain the aims and objectives of the project with examples of Beruli ulcer illustrations and why I believe these can be used to aid diagnosis at primary care level to raise awareness and for education. To give a very quick overview of medical <coughs> illustration, it involves illustrations that are a blend of science and art. With training in anatomy, medical artists are able to converse with medics, scientists and healthcare professionals to produce visual tools used for education within medicine and science. I am sure most of you will have used a graphic or two in your papers. To give you a very quick explanation to the mediums I'm using, it is pencil on the left, watercolour, and digital airbrushing. Digital airbrushing is a technique you can see in the far right image, which is still the art of painting, but using a digital canvas and pen. To give some background uses, I have included typical examples of some medical illustrations. One created in watercolor and the other with a digital airbrush. The visual format of illustration brings about clarity a visual impact that is engaging, informative, and can communicate specific information. An artist can dictate the most effective angle to best highlight the subject matter. You would not be able to photograph these views, for example. An artist also removes unwanted detail and shows only the necessary information, even highlighting a key area. The second example has been included as it taught me the value of providing culturally acceptable illustrations. So how do the merits of medical illustration like these lead to a project illustrating neglected tropical diseases for diagnosis? As highlighted in the talk by Professor Hay, a manual showing changes to the skin for NTDs, including photographs to give visual clues, is a very useful tool. The aims of this project are the same, but instead using medical illustrations to give visual clues. The aim to help those in the field in the detection of skin NTDs provided in the form of an annotated pamphlet. Further aims of the project are to provide a model for how medical illustrations can support low resource interventions for these underfunded diseases. It is also the desire to further the knowledge within the medical artist field. So part of the testing process is to evaluate whether one medium is better than another for communicating disease pathology and to discover if there are cultural preferences. I am testing pencil, watercolour and airbrush mediums. Specific objectives are to complete the best medical illustrations as possible and design specifically for those that will be using them. To create the medical illustrations, they are based on research and reference, working with experts, as well as gaining first-hand experience by visiting patients in endemic areas. From there, a feedback process will occur by testing a response to the illustrations. Testing first among clinicians, next among the health workers in Ghana, eventually culminating in revised and improved illustrations. Beyond that, the objective is to provide the medical illustrations that have performed the best during the testing process and distribute, as previously mentioned, in the form of a pamphlet to primary care level, especially in local community settings, to encourage early case reporting. Referring to the testing process, this meeting forms a very important part. I am showing a timeline because the first set of Beruli ulcer illustrations are complete and the time now is where I invite clinical feedback. Phase eight is where I shall be visiting cl clinics in Ghana and testing the illustrations among the health workers. 
Plus, I shall be seeing the disease firsthand and for the first time. So what can illustration provide when we already have photography? Well, the medium of photography is not perfect. Photos are susceptible to varying lighting. The detail of the lesions are not always clear. They can flatten the detail. Patients are not always available to photograph. Angles vary from one photo to another. Photos can have distracting backgrounds. Also, with a photo, a disadvantage of this approach is that people using them tend to try and pair up the clinical lesions with the photo rather than using them to link through the diagnosis. With illustration, there is an opportunity for improvement because medical illustrations offer these useful traits. The artist can identify key features to the skin for each NTD whilst removing unwanted background detail. An illustration depersonalises the disease. It could be of any person. The illustration can be adapted to reflect age, important for representing Viruli ulcer involving children. Working at both colour and grayscale is important, especially when no colour printing is available. An artist can stage the illustrations to show a clear visual progression. The illustrations can be used grouped like this or separately if the intention is to make it clear the Beruli may not necessarily follow these exact four stages. When used for educational purposes, it is helpful to see a consistent setup with a single anatomical view. Illustrations are helpful when there is stigma around a disease. For example, the illustrative representations of the disease could be more readily accepted than a photograph. Again, a photograph can be too graphic. Photographs can be very graphic, whereas illustrations can communicate the same information whilst reducing the scare factor. Illustrations could be used to show the most severe cases. Next, I'm giving you a brief overview of the creation process to demonstrate there is a scientific approach to the drawing. It is key the artist researches the disease, gathers reference, works with experts, and from there, initial sketches are produced. Cross-section views are very useful for seeing under the skin, but for now, illustrating how the disease presents on the skin surface before treatment is the goal. The intention always that the drawing evolves and improves with each round. Part of the improvement process was to illustrate on a more detailed background leg and foot. At this stage, varying feet and legs were illustrated. Here, the position of the Beruli lesion was over the ankle joint. <coughs> As you will have noticed, four stages of Beruli are being represented. Nodule, plaque, small lesion and large lesion. This is simply due to time constraints. Any feedback on this, though, happily received. It is useful to point out that other useful graphical data can always be incorporated within the illustration method, such as an insert showing where the lesions can occur across the body, to avoid confusion that it may be just on the ankle. For diagnosis purposes, however, to reiterate, the focus to continue to remain on the appearance of changes on the skin surface, the drawings to be systematic, with the lesion changes to be shown in the same anatomical position, such as this lateral view. Round three, the illustrations were developed with the lesion illustrated on the calf region. Further changes involved illustrating first as isolated lesions and adding to the same background leg. Completed by drawing the illustration separately, then scanning and placing the isolated lesion on the same leg. The advantage of this technique, it removes a varying background. This encourages focus on just changes to the skin and lesion making it easier to view the changes either across stages or they will work separately as well. In continuation of the testing process for best medium, the same pencil illustrations have been completed by painting using watercolour. Colour brings about its own advantages. In colour it is clear these illustrations are representative of local people. The merits of the watercolour medium are that it produces an organic looking effect due to the toothed texture of the paper. The organic look and feel may be more useful than other mediums, for example, to reduce the scare factor when it's very graphic. Other attributes of this medium are that it produces a nice skin texture, good tissue colour and results in a good level of realism and detail. These are the same stages painted using the digital airbrush. 
The merits of this medium are that the artist can achieve a very high level of realism and with that depict even the smallest detail of changes to the skin. By now you may have noticed that the mediums produce slight variations in disease representation. For example, the colours of the tissue and skin vary between watercolour and digital. The grainy texture of the watercolour paper produced a different effect as opposed to digital which looks more smooth. No one medium is better than the other but testing should result in an overall medium preference. During the illustration process, there is further methodology analysis, such as what single area to choose when illustrating the lesions. There is no restriction on illustrating on multiple body locations, however, but for this project, it would be too big a task to illustrate the lesions on all possible locations. The advantage of this medium is that it is very adaptable, so there are always options available. After testing, it will be interesting to discover what the results say about pinion to the best layout option as shown here. It may be that option two, an isolated view, works best, or option three, combined with a leg view. It will be very interesting to hear opinion. In summary, the goal is to produce anatomically accurate illustrations of a series of neglected tropical diseases. Early or correct diagnosis reduces the lifelong and devastating impact on sufferers. The work will be supplied and designed into a pamphlet that will first be available to clinics in Ghana. In the future, it is also the hope to supplement printed materials with a custom website containing these same illustrations, giving people increased access. By developing illustrations that may be less fearful for a younger audience, the aim is to explore the possibility of an additional preventative value by disseminating these visual resources in schools in endemic areas. Thank you for listening. And before I finish, I would like to acknowledge the following people. Richard Phillips, Roderick Hay, Michael Marks, Helen Please, and of course my supervisors, Rachel Simmons, Jane Ogden and Caroline Erilyn. Thank you very much.